I just bought a Samsung Galaxy Book so I can do a true test to see how the ecosystem of Galaxy Book with Galaxy XR works for productivity, virtual displays, and then we'll do a comparison, uh, I think in other videos to see you know, what features are you know, worse or better for this ecosystem versus the Apple Vision Pro uh, kind of ecosystem with their MacBook line as well. So getting started here, I already went ahead and tried to test this out just to make sure I got it all working for this first video. I immediately ran into some issues. So I made sure I was logged into the same Samsung account on this laptop and this headset. And when I tried to go ahead and do the PC link, I saw my laptop, but it didn't work at all. It just was like hanging out, not doing anything. So it saw the device, it found the device, but it wasn't connecting. So even though this says can't find your device, I said, okay, what does this say? Uh, it says, okay, make sure you're signed in. Second screen and multi-control are installed. So I'm not even sure what those are. I figured that'd just be a setting, but I actually had to go Google it and figure it out. Second screen and multi-control. So on the computer here, I opened up, I was able to download and open second screen. And it actually shows my XR. Multi-control, all right, a free tool right here. Use your mouse and keyboard on Galaxy Book. Okay, let's install. This app is incompatible with all devices in use. That's not a good start. Let's go ahead and go back to the screen here and just see what works. So we got my Galaxy Book, we're gonna click connecting. Nothing's really happening. What I realized is that I have to go to the second screen app and click on my XR as well. And here we are. So now we have our display and it looks good. The screen looks fantastic. Everything is very readable. Now, I want to look at a few settings here. And first off, what I've noticed immediately, I don't see my mouse. I see it here, but I don't see my mouse moving around here, which, you know, people who use laptops, I think most of you are going to know if you can't see your mouse, it's going to be really hard to actually be productive or do anything useful using this display. Uh, so for the rest of this video, you're going to probably notice me kind of looking back and forth to make sure I know where my mouse is. But already, I'm going to say this is almost unusable if I can't see my mouse. But let's look at some settings. We have extend or second screen only. Let's look at second screen only for a second. Okay, so that's actually going to turn off this display, which is good. That's what the uh, Mac and Vision Pro automatically does. Like It knows you're using this, like why have this screen on. This also has other features like extend shoot so now i've lost my mouse oh man because i can't see my mouse over here anymore i'm kind of looking i'm trying to find my mouse there and then going up 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 okay let's go to extend okay i had already done this before actually it, it first kind of moved the extended display this display to the right but i moved it up top as it should be, and just to kind of confirm what I'm talking about here. So mouse goes here, and then, of course, I can't see the mouse over there. I'm just trying to drag that window down. I, I can't even get it working. That's, uh, you're just gonna have to trust that that'll work. In the case of like what we're seeing right now with the mouse issue, duplicate's like the only thing that's even usable. So I can always look down and find my mouse if needed. There we go, I'll use the arrows, duplicate, okay. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but even if you did have that extend display option working and the mouse thing was working, it's still not going to be super usable because the pass through looking through the Galaxy XR to the laptop screen, it's just not good enough to be able to like read comfortably for long periods of time. I actually did just go back and forth between the Galaxy XR and the Vision Pro pass through just to read on my laptop screen. And Vision Pro is probably 10 to 15% better when it comes to pass through reading text on a screen, but still not something you'd want to be doing even in Vision Pro for more than a few minutes at a time. So the whole idea of having your physical laptop as an extended display while you're in XR to me doesn't really make much sense given the current status of the pass through cameras and software. Now I can at least find my mouse and we'll try to look at this display. Uh, we also have allow 
touch and pen input on tablet. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think we'd want that turned on. I'm not going to mess with that. And then scale. It recommends 150%. Feels about right. It looks readable. Uh, but let's go to 125. I probably would prefer 125. I'll just show you really fast, though, um, what it looks like to go to 100. This starts to feel pretty small, but still readable. I'm going to stick to 125 and just show you how things look on the display. I've got kind of a half window here. We'll do another half window. Okay, so we got two windows open comfortably here. I can read it pretty well. I'm going to tell you, I was just working for about an hour in the Vision Pro doing the same sort of test, and Vision Pro looks a little bit better. I think I'd be able to tell you if you just blind put a headset on me, which is which. I'm not going to quite say I can see pixels, like as I look over here, but it just seems a little bit more jagged. I almost see like rainbow colors in some of that text as I look carefully at it. But don't get me wrong, it is readable. It's definitely usable. We'll go ahead and make this full screen again. And then I'll show you uh, the screen sizing. So there's no way to add another screen. I can't have another virtual display here, nor can I change the resolution other than just kind of like a little bit, let's say, because we don't want to do a lower resolution. That's not going to look good. We're at the highest resolution right now, 1920 by 1200. Ideally, we would be at something like 3840 by 1200 and allow like an ultra wide monitor to have multiple windows open, but we just don't have that ability right now. So all we're left to do is, of course, we can move the display, resize it, but it's going to stay at that fixed aspect ratio where you're still only going to be able to do a couple of windows comfortably. Just looking down to find my mouse again. So it just doesn't look that great if you just try to expand it here because you're still only looking at like two windows. And unless you like really make things tiny manually, what I mean by that is you go minus minus. So you can kind of go like that and then try to like condense this window. And you can see even as I start to try to like make it smaller, like you're just not gonna be able to have tons of windows open because of this limited virtual resolution. Now I will still show you that we can go ahead and go into a virtual environment so we've got all this virtual environment showing up and we have our display here still. I can't see the keyboard while this is on. And then if I try to open up another window, so there we go, we can have our settings and then our virtual display and any other windows we want. Let's just try one more window. For some reason, Play Store, it just made my window here disappear. I don't know why. I mean, I don't even see the, the button to close this window. That was strange, although at least this jumps back in front of us. Um, so maybe some apps are just kind of defaulting to like a more widescreen or uh, full screen view type situation or something, but maybe just some bugs need to be worked out. Also, hand occlusion does still work pretty well across the virtual display here, so that looks good. We're not showing those ghost hands, we're showing our real hands in front of the screen. When I look at the mouse, again, I'm finding it here. If I move that mouse over, it's not moving to the settings panel. So the mouse is really fixed to the display here. So even when we're connected, the mouse is not gonna turn into a virtual mouse in this environment. And let's do the same test with the keyboard. So I'm just going to search here so I can have keyboard up. If I want to type, no. So the keyboard also is not doing anything on this virtual screen either. It's only going to work. Well, of course, it'll work on this computer. And the audio from this video is going to the headset. I had to make that change in settings, by the way. By default, the audio was still coming from the computer. Settings here, right click, sound settings. We can see where to play sound. Speakers is what was default, or digital output Galaxy Muhan. It's kind of funny that this is this was the uh, code name for the device, because uh, now it's called the Galaxy XR, as we all know. So interesting. I think there are just like a few little things like that. Uh, they didn't cross all their T's and dot their I's with this release, but it still works. We're just a bit limited in functionality in terms of like this actually being super usable. At the end of the day, when we're talking about 
having a virtual laptop screen in front of you in XR. Yes, it works, but there's some major limitations right now that would make me say it's almost unusable. If you are in the Galaxy ecosystem, I think you just got to wait. And I'm sure they'll make this better in the coming months, maybe years, who knows. If you have a Mac, I mean, just get a used Vision Pro for the same price. There's If you're trying to just use it with your laptop, no need to jump through all these hoops. If you have a Windows computer, you're going to be stuck for now using a third-party software from the Play Store like Virtual Desktop. I did another video kind of talking about Virtual Desktop if you want to take a look at that, and I'll go more in depth on that on a Windows laptop specifically in the near future here. But otherwise, that's all I got on the whole ecosystem for you know tying a Galaxy Book to the Galaxy XR. I'd call it half-baked. A lot of work needs to be done still. And now we're going to cut to kind of a similar look at Vision Pro with the MacBook Pro to see how that all works together. So uh, let's jump into that now. When we're on the Mac and the Vision Pro, we can see a really nice tight integration here. I mean, even this connect button when I move the laptop around, it knows where my laptop is, asks me to connect, and... And here we go. We've got nice hand occlusion on our screen. And this is the standard Mac virtual display uh, on day one. This is the only size that it could really do. Of course, we can make the screen bigger, but at the end of the day, it's still gonna be kind of this one display. And if you're trying to split windows, for example, you've got kind of, you know, a normal, it feels like one of these like 27 inch kind of square displays where you can legitimately do two windows next to each other but if you're trying to like really look at a lot of stuff it gets kind of difficult no matter how big you make this screen you are going to have to kind of maybe move this up a bit and then have like some other windows you're just kind of like moving around that it's just not an ideal way to have tons of windows open but then apple made an update and allowed you to have multiple sizes so right here we can select standard or wide or ultra wide. So let's just go through each one. Here we go. So now you can start to see with four windows open, it starts to get a little bit more useful, but it's still, things are feeling a little bit squeezed and it just kind of depends on what you're working on. If I want to just look at one big spreadsheet, for example, I can clearly see up to the AX column. Now let's go ahead and go ultra wide. And now we can start to look at, I have all these hotkeys for um, kind of quarter screen segments here. And now we have four usable windows or screens across this ultra wide display. You could very easily work fluidly across all of these. And for you Excel nerds out there, we're going all the way up to B, Y, if we are in one big spreadsheet. We can move it wherever we want, nice and fluid. We can change the size still. But as you notice the size changing, we still have four clear displays and we can make it that big. That, it doesn't go any bigger than that. But here you go, you're surrounded by your screens. And I can just quickly go back to any type of display that I want. And there you saw in real time how long it takes for it to go back to a different screen size. And then at any time we can go ahead and dial in an environment with nice hand occlusion still. And we actually have a little bit of an audio of the environment as well. And we can turn off that environment sound if we want. But that's a quick look at what Mac and Vision Pro together are gonna have to offer. And then you can see how quickly it goes away. There you go. So we're back to my screen and we can connect again if we want. So again, just in real time, seeing how nice and fluid that is. You can open up other Vision Pro windows alongside your screen. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and even open up something like TikTok, I can go ahead and kind of look at TikTok while I'm working on my computer over here. I can run music here. So let me turn the audio up for a second. So just double checking the differences here. When I play music from this app, of course I'm gonna hear it in the Vision Pro speakers. And then when I play music from my computer here, 
I also am hearing it from the speakers in the Vision Pro. I mean, honestly, I prefer just using kind of Spotify built into my Mac when I'm working on my Mac with Vision Pro. But if you just want another screen or like another, let's see if we can, there we go. So now if we want kind of like a pin to the wall, just like a different music app or whatever running separately from whatever I'm doing here, if I want to just focus my virtual display on whatever work I'm doing, then I can have that right there. Click play whenever, and I've got that. And one more nice thing about this integration here is, of course, I have my uh, virtual desktop right here, and then I have an app from Vision Pro right here. I just have Safari open. My mouse and keyboard will work on this app, so check this out. Follow the mouse. I keep going. As I look over here, my mouse turns into this kind of gray cursor and I can go ahead and type. So it's nice that the keyboard and mouse all of a sudden become uh, a way to control everything across Vision Pro once I'm connected to the virtual display. I'll also mention that the text is very clear. Let's look at something a little bit more interesting. So as I put the screen out, it's about a natural distance from me. It feels like it's a few feet away. As I read through some of this, reading articles is no problem. I always say it feels like 98% of the quality of a real display in front of me. It's not perfect, it's not 100% perfect, but absolutely usable for long periods of time. And this is on the M2 Vision Pro. I know the M5 has gotten better uh, at this as well. At least that's what I've read. That'd be up to you whether it's uh, the values there to go for that higher end chip for a slightly better experience with a virtual display. I'm returning this laptop in the next week or so, so let me know if you have any questions or testing you wanna see before that time. I'll keep an eye on the comments uh, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Otherwise, thank you for watching.